Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to Sewing by the Seat of My Pants. <laughs> They're feeling a little warm right now. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, I'd just like to say this person over here on my right, Artlantia, is our very own Nadia, returned from the D-E-A-D. -E welcome, Nadia. Welcome to the ashram. It's very good to have you here. So everybody could hear me. <clears throat> I should type that just in case. I can hear you. And I would like to thank Kroot for managing our our session here and and making sure we have hosts and hostesses to carry us through this dilemma if it is such um, um I was gonna ask you <clears throat> questions um I feel blessed to have the time the microphone is working and you're all here. I was going to probably ask these questions after you got started, but um, I could go ahead and ask, ask it now if you would like. When I um, first came, my first visit, I think it was my first visit to the Institute, I walked into the barn, which many, many of you know what that looks like. You've been here. Ah, okay. Shoot has questions. Good. Can you hear me? Thank you. I didn't see that. What is your question? What is your question? <laughs> can you can you hear me? I don't hear you. I see. Oh no! So there will be some problem. Oh, I see why. Okay, try now. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Okay, like I said, I, I was going to say these to you af afterwards, but I can go ahead and do it now if you'd like. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's 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 put this situation out. Say you were going to move to Sacramento, and you were going to basically become an entrepreneur. You decided to. What would be the top three or four things that you would do immediately or right away to make that happen? Well, that would depend on my financial situation, first of all. Like, uh, do I have money? Um, not a lot. Not a lot. Uh, I mean, am I going to rent the shop? Well, that's, that's kind of what I mean. Like, um... You, could, you know, any direction you want to go, like if you want to go into jewelry, if you want to go into art, or just what comes to mind as far as, you know, if you had to do. Well, if I was going to become an entrepreneur anywhere, um, and if I had the money, then my first, the first thing I would want to do is to, I mean, ideally, I would go to the busiest street and try to find a shop there or try to see if somebody already had a shop that they might want to share part of it because being connected to the institute, I have, uh, you know, an imaginable wealth of objects to put in my shop. Um, or even to, if I can't have them right in the, um, right in the shop, then I, I can, I know that I have access to it. So that would be the number one thing I would like to do myself. Personally, I think if, if I were going to be out there and doing something, that might, that might be what I do. Um. Then, okay, and then if I don't have money, I'd probably have to get uh, 
some way to pay my rent, etc. And then I would want to look around still to see if there was some way I can offer my wares to to the public. And um, so that might entail going to fairs. It might entail doing uh, finding out what's around me, where I can do trunk shows. And that is, that's a pretty common thing out there. Like when I first heard of a trunk show, I thought, oh, wow, that's such a dumb name and blah, blah, blah. And what do you mean you bring a trunk? And <laughs> I didn't know. I had no clue. But it's really well known. If you say it to anybody who's actually, you know, selling jewelry and th it's all over the place. So it's very common you can go in any bead store or any craft store um, or a clothing store and have a trunk show I mean you could do that every day if you don't have a regular job you could just book yourself seven days a week um, so I would do that say if I, I couldn't find a, um, a good craft fair where I can just go maybe once a week or on the weekends, I would try to do that or maybe combine them, do both of them and, you know, make my stuff. Um, I mean, in actual fact, when I had to work here, that's what I did. I went to, uh, it wasn't really a craft fair, but they did have crafters at a farmer's market. It was quite large, quite a big thing, and um, seemed to be well established. I can't remember how I heard about it, but it was a three-hour drive from here. So I had to drive very early in the morning to get there by 8, and then it was over at 1, so it was also very short, and then drive three hours back. And, but it was okay. And then all week, you know, we'd do ceramic, make ceramics, make sculpture, and, um, and just do that until, you know, from throughout the summer, spring and summer, until the bad weather came. So that would be, two, that's like two or three things. And then the fourth thing, well, I don't know. Laura, I think, is either doing this or um, knows some people who's doing it or both. And it's kind of like the, the Tupperware sort of thing. You know, you have parties at people's house. However, if you're just moving somewhere, maybe, I don't know, if you know anybody, that would, that would be one thing. And then you can bring your jewelry in, in your case, and in, in my case, it might be art and have um, an art party and art showing I mean the main thing no matter what you do is you need to come in contact with people does that address your question yeah okay good and do you have anything uh, to say back about that, like, are you uh, are you in that position now? Yeah, I'm doing. I'm um, trying to do some of those things. Um, me and Marianne, we um, are inspired by uh, Laura as well. Um, Kay, you know, to have the jewelry party. So we're definitely going to uh, work on that um, ourselves and stuff. So. Yeah, I think that could be so much fun like to have people that you know it's a good way to start and then they can you know, introduce you to people that they know yeah and your work is very good by the way <laughs> Doing thank great. you mm -hmm. oh and online of course no matter where you are just get your stuff up you know once it's up it's up It's out there, you know, it's available. Did you have another question? 
uh, not this time. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I was just saying when I, or does anybody else have any question right now? So when I first came here, I saw, um, you know, here in the barn, I I guess uh, they were getting ready for a show in L.A., and I saw these monumental paintings, and they're, they're like um, a triptych, three pieces, you know, forming a triangle, and they sit in bases. So they, the thing where this show was, they didn't have any wall space, and so somebody came up with this idea of just having the paintings kind of be like sculptures, six foot tall. And EJ had painted beings, just these beings on um, on these panels, and they were all set up to make kind of a labyrinth and I had no experience with art you know in my whole life or you know just any anything like that I'd never seen anything like that and I was just so totally blown away and I just felt oh my god you know I have to these have to come to New York as well as living at that time and I just just from that when I saw those you know something just something clicked and I became involved with with art sales I opened a gallery in um, in Brooklyn Truve Gallery and uh, it was uh, above a recording studio Bill Laswell's recording studio so we got some interesting people <laughs> coming up there walking through we had the art gallery and it was huge and in the very back we had a flotation tank so folks could come in and walk they had to walk through the gallery to get to the tank and so that was very interesting to uh, they could have that experience of seeing the art and floating and then seeing the art afterwards um, that was always very interesting for me um, and that's another thing that people should be aware of that is available in some aspect are the flotation tanks. Were, were you charging for those sessions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and you could charge, I mean, you could charge $15 to $50. You know, it goes, it can be all over the place. Um, yeah, and we had, uh, you remember, you know, Mick, I think it was, uh, he, uh, he got that tank, oh yeah, when we moved here, that's how that went, <laughs> because once you get a tank, then you have some, you have some thing <laughs> that you have to kind of think about and take care of, but, Did so, you yeah, go ahead. Do you have a little bit of money to work with when you open the open the um, gallery? You know, my my plan was to go to India, and so we had a certain amount of money to take that trip. And then we met someone. Um, I can't. I don't know how that. Oh yeah. Uh, and they told us about EJ Gold, <laughs> and then everything changed. <laughs> so the money that we were going to use to go to India, we put the gallery together. So I did, yeah, we did have a bit of money, but um, we mostly did everything ourselves. And some people that I, I was working with came, you know, and they helped put up walls and things because the place was just... You know, if I had looked at it by myself, I would have said, oh, my God, no way, and just ran away. But I don't know, some of you might remember Chris. Um, I don't know who he is now. He ch changes his name from time to time. Uh, do you know Tamara has red curly hair? I'd have to look on Facebook. But anyway, he was there, and he had such a great positive attitude. I'll just never forget it, you know, and maybe had 
experiencing construction. <laughs> and he was like, oh, this is fantastic. And blah, blah, blah. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> Let's try it then. So it was a lot of fun to put it together. It was definitely uh, one of those changing points in a lifetime. And it really all came through the marketing of the art. If there was no, you know, that was the uh, the energy of it. And, and um, yeah. And it was just like seeing the art, you know, not hearing about it. not It just had such an impact. So, and then, you know, just that, <laughs> I remember EJ says, well, do you know who Moreau is? And I said, no. Is it Picasso? No. And he named a few guys. He goes, oh, it doesn't matter. You will. <laughs> and, like, and of course, you know, little by little, you do pick up things, whether you want to or not. <laughs> and, the, and the gallery was able to support itself? Well, yeah, we, I don't know how that works. I don't know if we paid rent or the fact that we redid the whole thing helped helped out we had a very nice opening and a lot of people came i don't know where those people came from but there were a lot of people there and um there were a few sales that night at the at the opening and we also actually did sell quite a few of the monumentals we had uh we had monumentals on the wall and then we had that whole labyrinth we had a room that was painted black. Did you ever go, Antimatter? Did you come to Truth Gallery? I don't remember if you did. But um, uh, we had a room that was painted black when there was all the dark hours, you know, the big um, prints that are black and white. And then we had another room. Uh, I think we had some of Menlo's work or different Grass Valley graphics. I think there were like three different art rooms plus the big main hall. And then in the back was the tank and books and, you know, all a bunch of, uh, yeah, a bunch of little things like Lucy's. Um, I can't remember what else. But, oh, yeah, we had built, you know, the cruciform uh, image. We built one of those as a shelf and had stuff on that. That was, oh, and all CDs, of course. So, like that. Uh, yeah. um. And then, shortly after that, we met Heather, who is uh, EJ's New York dealer. She, and so we... Um, what happened, and then we decided also to move here at the same time. So Heather took over all the art that we had, and <laughs> that's it. <laughs> we moved out to California. But she had amazing, and now here's how we met Heather. Uh, shall I go on, or does anybody have a question right now? I, I wanted to just um, maybe comment. Uh, EJ today was talking about the uh, designer idea. Uh, Heather Edelman, um, really her gallery kind of moved from being a, a gallery into uh, gallery plus designer. And EJ was saying today about how that if you go with the designer model, you don't really, I mean, you could have it upstairs in your in your space with just a phone number and uh, so anyway that was kind of an interesting um change because of the art market is is changing uh so much yeah mm -hmm. i could see i could see that happening well heather how uh let's see how that i was working with her in new york um but uh Let's, I'm trying to, oh yeah, we wanted to have, we wanted to have the Cedar Bar show. I think that was it. Or it was, no, it was not. It was the John Cage show. And so I was just walking around 
going in different galleries um, and, t- you know, talking to people, see what would happen. And then when I, I went to Heather, she was she was so excited, you know. Not only she was she was so excited because she had a show planned and the and the artists flaked out at the last minute and so here we could have a show, you know, no problem. And it's true these stories that EJ tells it. I mean it's it really happens. And so we had a uh, John Cage show there. That was the first one. And through them uh, Heather, one of their clients was, uh, you know, she worked for the White House, Kaki Hawkersmith. And so when they were doing their decorating, they called Heather. And so Heather, you know, put her in touch with EJ. And so the, uh, a lot of his work went there. But she, so she would have probably done something differently if she had been in the place where she is now, because now she is basically a designer, and it's, it, she's very, uh, you know, bummed <laughs> about how the art market is now. She has very, very good taste in art, and uh, she said, you know, she can't sell anything good these days that people are really going for the you know the lower level stuff but I believe that there are people out there that really do and you know we we see them all the time when we go out when they see something of EJ's and their reaction you know they do wake up and they do go oh what's that and that you know they are interested and it's not it's like one out of a hundred or even more but if they I feel if they look at EJ's work and respond don't say who did that the kids you know <laughs> that they um they're seeing something uh that this John Cage show that we did at Heather's Gallery there was a young girl there with the Merce Cunningham dance troupe and she stood in front of this painting for quite a long time so I went over and talked to her and she just said you know I feel so much gratitude to this artist for for going there and bringing this back like she just and EJ mentioned that today in fact and he's never mentioned that before uh, that I heard of that um, she knew <laughs> she knew what happened I mean I learned from her how this art became materialized, you know, and uh, I'll, I'll just always remember that. Anyway, uh, she was very really, really it, 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 inter- it was interesting because I did the uh, second shift at the uh, arts and craft fair that EJ was talking about, mm-hmm. and... You could, there were about three people, you know, there was a lot in the booth. There were um, uh, packets of the pay dirt. There were all kinds of cards, which did attract, the cards really did attract uh, people's attention. Um, and then kind of on on easels, there were some drawings from the uh, Draw Good Now book. And most people were completely oblivious, but there were there was a young girl, probably about maybe 17 or 18, who was literally drawn over to the drawings and just, you know, really saw the drawings and wanted to know them. And then another woman who was, um, she had the doll-making booth. When I went over, she said, you know, okay, tell me about... <clears throat> you know, those drawings, um, because she, you know, she does watercolor and has been developing her creativity. And and so it was just really interesting to me because those people that could see could really see. Um, Yeah. 
Exactly. Yes, there was a lady who came earlier before we got there, and it was the same thing. She said she's taken all kinds of classes, but she'd never seen anything like that, and she wanted to know more about it. And I won't be surprised if she shows up at class. But, yeah, she's very impressed. And, you know, Rocky, Drogut now, those shading, that's that's all they were, you know? It was a wonder at EJ because, again, at that John Cage show, when I, I was already there at the gallery working with Heather, and so the art arrived, and I was unrolling it, and I was like, what is EJ doing, you know? Here's this, like, big New York gallery, and what he sent was, like, the simplest thing you can imagine. Um, it was, you know, black face, six foot, right? Black face with um, some kind of gown color or, or, you know. So it was just that and one color, black and one color, and they were all pretty much the same. And I thought, oh, my God, you know, I was thinking, oh, he could have done da 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 But then when you look back and you see that girl, you know, I go, that was good features for her, you know. And, and, I, and I see him work like that a lot. Um, sometimes something happens and he goes, it's one person, you know, and, and they benefit. So, um, what else did we want to say? Oh, yes, I, I remember um, in going out and in, I mean, there's no way that I could have been able to do any of that, like just knock on someone's door and say, oh, let me tell you about this artist, you know, <laughs> um, without um, a good reason for it. I just would never do it. I, it's unbelievably uh, fearful of talking to strangers and you know and even going to fairs but the but what I really liked is that those kinds of situations just jam you into jam me into a way out and the only way that I could get out is if I really worked on um getting my presence and you know being with the person whoever showed up and not really caring, you know, what what's going to happen, except for that, except I'm going to... Oh, yeah, I must have clicked that thing. I don't know what happened, but anyway, it's back. <laughs> um, yeah, so what I was saying was uh, the most important thing is if somebody comes by, and I mean, this might be a big duh, but for me, it uh, it got me through those spaces. So it really forced me into working and so that's what I, I really like because of my shyness and my my fear. Um, I just reached out to the only thing that I knew of to, to still stay there and not run away and, um, you know, do that thing, talk to this person. And... Um, I'm thinking mostly of the fairs that we had in Marin, that we did in Marin, and uh, that's where, that's where it was. So that's um, kind of San Francisco, but maybe I don't know if it's a little past it or, but it's as far anyway from here. Um, yeah, I can't remember. The people were there. There was a large ratio of people that responded to EJ's art. We, you know, you were asking Kevin if the gallery paid for itself, and 
Um, it's just hard to say because I don't know what was coming in and what was going out. I wasn't that wasn't my part <laughs> to take care of. But with the with the craft fair, it was amazing um, the response that the public had to this to this artwork. And there it was mostly ceramics that we carried. And so that's, I mean, that's good and bad if it's windy, you know, it's a scary thing. But with jewelry, I mean, that is, that's, a, comparatively speaking, it's a very easy gig. And we saw how many people had jewelry. We, we were not even allowed to bring jewelry because we, we entered quite late. And they said, we, we are filled up with jewelry, but all of them. Pardon? It was overwhelming. There was so much jewelry, and like EJ so said, the, the prices were unbelievable. Um, they were, he was so, telling everybody, he was like, you got to raise your price. That's too low. <laughs> because, because each person was different. They had different styles, and they were all so good. And, and but, but very inexpensive, you know, like something, I know some of those things we would be charging like three or four times, or I would anyway, if I had to make that, <laughs> I'd want a lot more for some of those things. So my thought after, you know, after seeing the show and looking at, as you said, there were some really uh, very competent jewelers whose prices were, you know, ten dollars and twenty-five dollars for that in a gallery space. There was one necklace I saw that easily could have been a hundred and twenty-five dollar um, mm -hmm. necklace in, in a different space. So, my thought would be yeah. to, yeah. for you who are doing jewelry, would be to go and approach some of the galleries. Um, yes, definitely. Because. Um, when I had the gallery in Pennsylvania, people would come in and they would look at the big art uh, on the wall. And, you know, we would sell something every now and then off the wall. But it was really, it was it was the jewelry and the ceramics. Yes, I'm talking about the show on Friday. Um, because it, it was it was disastrous. Um, these were very competent designers. And... The prices were going? like ten, fifteen, thirty dollars. He's how's it going? <laughs> He's asking us how's it going. Oh, is it oh, going well? <laughs> <laughs> After we go take a look at that uh, at the uh, temple, I've added a few things. Mm. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So one of the. One of the thoughts, too, just on a slightly different, you know, so I would encourage you all to take your jewelry to uh, galleries because they would be, you know, the functional artists selling. The other thing, um, looking at EJ's art gallery here in the space, um, I had a thought. Um, the first art dealing class I ever took, uh, the man gave me the best advice I had ever heard, which was to get a big um, art book and just spend 15 minutes a day just looking at the images. And he said, if you do that for a year, at the end of the time, you'll really have a good basis of understanding for art. And I'm thinking, now we have this beautiful art space um, in the ashram, you could go and just sit um, in the space and maybe do your sketching there or just uh, spend some time looking at the images and working uh, like they used to do in the museums. Yeah, I used to do that in our gallery. I would pick a painting and just sit, sit and look at it. It was quite altering, you know, kind of... Um, space changing especially i want to share this with with you guys the one there's one painting and it's <clears throat> from the moonbeam show not the vancouver moonbeam but the new york moonbeam they were different the main piece and um because i looked at it for so long i saw um you, when you look at this painting 
I mean, and I think many of us, if you look at a painting like this, uh, between heaven and hell, you could look at it and you'll see a certain thing and look at it, and then you'll see a different thing. And a lot of EJ's paintings are like that, where you can where you can see two distinct di and different images in in the one painting. Well, this one, which it was unusual to me, changed three times. So if you ever have that um, painting in front of you or an image of it, just look at it and try to see the all the three different images. And it, it's just interesting because it nothing changes, nothing moves, but yet you can see that it changed. <laughs> it's very... Well, have you actively when I first saw that. What's that? Have you actively, um, I know, I'm assuming that you've actively tried to get EJ's art, you know, in galleries and other places mm -hmm. uh, throughout the years. And I think I heard that even your um, own art, that you've been getting them into hospitals. Did I hear that yeah. correctly? Mm -hmm. Can you talk about just your basic approach, like, you know, going into a situation totally cold where you don't yeah. know the people, how you approach that? Exactly. That's exactly what I did. And, um, I mean, Beverly now, she, she does all of that. She, if she wants someone's art, she, you know, she does all the footwork and we give her the art and she does whatever she does. And when she's finished, the art comes back or it's old or whatever. But when I was doing it, that's that was just it, you know. Just go out, and say, okay, I'm going to take this part of the city today, and just go and knock on the door and say, oh, hi, I'm blah blah blah, and I'm representing this artist, or you know, in your case, go be yourself. And what I found really worked was talking about the artist because, well. In EJ's case, it's such an interesting story he has, and, you know, and he has the bio, and there was no bio at that time, and we asked for one because, you know, it was necessary for me because I was just totally, you know, so shy, I couldn't say anything, so I kind of needed like a book and pointed pictures, <laughs> read the captions or something, but, um, Anyway, so it was developed, and and that that was it, you know. So then I was talk to the artist and excite the person about that, you know. EJ tells stories, and it also helps them remember you because maybe how many people do they have to, you know, address in that way? But um, you know, and then. If we got that far, then I could start to show them images because I had a portfolio as well. One place I walked in, um, the guy, the the owner, manager, whoever, he says, Oh, yeah, AJ Gold, I think he's the best incarnation of Gurdjieff I've ever heard. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> you know, I just never know where it's going to take you. And that's another thing. You just never know who you're talking to and where it's going to lead you. If you, well, you're not, you're not shy, Kevin. You just go right out there. But if you take the first step in whatever it is, you know, you say, okay, I'm going to market this thing, market my art, market DJ's art or whatever. You just take that first step and you'll see how you'll just be guided and things will just open up doors. I mean, come on, the White House? Like, hello? I never would have thought of that. <laughs> that came from somewhere else. Certainly. How do you how do you knock on the door that is the art dealer for the White House? How do you even know who is doing that? I mean, that's magic. And And every time I seem to step outside to do that because it was not easy um, 
Andrew said that he had the opportunity to go out with somebody uh, on a selling thing, and he was surprised to see for him that it wasn't as hard as he thought. And, you know, so that just doing it for him broke a lot of his preconceived ideas of how, oh, can't, 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 and this, 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 but just doing it, you know, now it, it's a lot different for him and and but for me I say well if you just go you know magic just happens and that's a lot of fun too to see that occur so what we when we first started meeting about this um, marketing selling kind of dilemma um, we were saying what is stopping is there something stopping us, you know, or what's my next move? What can I actually do now or tomorrow? You know, I wake up, now I'm going to work on my art marketing project, whatever it is. I think one thing is to get it down clearly. For me, I would like to say, this is what I would like to have happen. And exactly what is it? What do I really want to have happen and get as clear as I could on that? And then, you know, I don't know if it's called visualization or I don't know, maybe there's a word for it, but just becoming really clear on what it is. And then look, okay, what would be my first step toward doing that thing? A ginger? Ginger? Yeah. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, do you uh, know is the ceramics, are there pieces that are already made up still that are available to sell? Mm -hmm. There are there are some. Um, the, the thing with the ceramics is, or what happened with us as when we were making them, was uh, the, the blackware is very difficult to get a good piece and um, because it did what is called shivered. Nobody, we took them everywhere to try to find someone, you know, who could do them. Nobody could do, nobody could copy it. I mean, copying EJ's artist is impossible. He doesn't, you know, he just doesn't paint like anyone. But anyway, besides that, uh, so, there are some still available, but it's not abundant. You know, maybe there might be, I don't know, Jewel? Jewel, in the blackware, how many pieces would you say? Uh-huh. 20, that's what I was thinking, too. So, there are it can probably... Be, it can be the other pieces, too, in red and, you know... Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be just the black one. I think we only have black or white. Right? We don't have other types. Maybe, okay, she's saying, she's saying maybe we ha might have like, uh-huh, one or two of the different designs, like City in the Sky or maybe oh. Women in Red, but not a whole lot anymore. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, and because they're so few and and basically irreplaceable at this point, they're pretty expensive. Although, I think they've always been kind of expensive. <laughs> but they're so wonderful to look at. So, um, Trude, I'm curious, what is your, what's your plan? Because I think you're getting ready to do something, huh? Well, we finally have a really big show um, at the O'Connell Center um, on University uh, Campus. Um, that's going to be our first really, really big show, and that's uh, in December. Um, it's a true um, craft show where they wouldn't even let uh, people in. We actually had to send in uh, pictures of me actually doing 
the jewelry before they would even accept us as a vendor. So sure, I really that's good. I, I really like that. Um, so yeah. that'll be the first, you know, real, real uh, test, you know, uh, first big show. So how and did so you I'm find getting... out about that, and how did you get yourself in it? Uh, well, we, you know, we knew, um, we know the area pretty well, so we knew that was coming up. So we um, <laughs> made sure that we got involved with it, you know, got it all set up, and um, and uh, you know, and right now I'm just working on. Um, getting pieces ready for that it, it all has to be handmade by me specifically to get into yes. that show mm -hmm. um so um you know working with that and you know of course we're, we're working on the website and uh, I'll, I'll continue to do my uh, street sales and i'll continue even though unfortunately gainesville has kind of dried up with the small businesses i'll continue to try to find small businesses that might be able to get, you know, some of my jewelry in. And um, um, so I'll be working, you know, in that way, um, just trying to find places I can get myself out there and and basically going and just opening my mouth and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. There's one thing I noticed with EJ, he had a great exercise for us this morning when he was doing the rhythmics, and he said oh, he didn't care what we did, but we had to do it kind of on the beat and, and with confidence, you know, and I think that's one thing that he really um, portrays, you know, is, is a lot of confidence, and I, I kind of hear that in your voice with your you know, and, and kind of saw it, you know, through how you've been working and that uh, that you have a lot of confidence. And I think you have a, a lot of um, feeling that it will work. You have a positive attitude. Is that true? Yes, I, I am positive. If if I believe, you know, if you can get the foot traffic, and that, that is a challenge, especially here, uh, the way our you know, way our town is divided up. There's no real um, central hub. There's a there's a downtown okay. section, but it but it's not always a lot of foot traffic. And being in Florida, it's hot. But but as far as I'm concerned, if you can find the foot traffic, um, I, I've been happy when I've had enough foot traffic. I'll, I'll, I'll put it that way. <laughs> Good. Hey, you know, just as you were talking, I was thinking about because where I used to work in. Uh, Montreal and hair places, they used to go to Florida <laughs> for their vacation, you know, the women. So now I'm thinking, well, what about, what about salons, you know, as a place to uh, offer jewelry? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. What did you say? What about salons, like beauty, beauty, what do they call, call them? Beauty? Oh, so, salons, you What do they call mean? them? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't thought about that, and I know, yeah. um, um, you know, uh, Kay's influence of even maybe the tattoos might work at places like that. Who knows? Mm hmm But that, like, there are some places where you know folks get their hair done, and it's like pretty upscale, and sometimes you can see things for sale there, different kinds of things, jewelry, maybe. But, yeah, it's too. That? The, other, the other thing um, would be to check out uh, with your state's listing of arts and crafts and street fairs. Like I was looking, um, you know, at the listing for Florida, for example. Um, if you be, I mean, that's what a lot of the artists I'd have them do in Pennsylvania is that they would um, join or uh, for, you know, get on the listing and then they would get all the updates of all the different um, craft fairs and street fairs that were happening. So I encourage people to check that out as a resource. Yeah. When we first started painting, this is kind of Cherokee, um, well, when I first started, it took me a couple of years to even try it <laughs> after EJ started teaching it. And then um, 
I put things on eBay, and I remember, you know, it, it was is selling a lot better than it does these days, but I remember my first sale was I, I sold a 8x10 black and white with a thin gold strip frame for $150, and I thought, that is insane. You know, I couldn't believe it. Of course, I did put it up there, and so that's what I'm saying. I like, just get it up, and because you never know. I mean, you, you're... you're um, your art is great, Rocky. I think I, would, I just do abstracts, but you just never know. And I noticed um, the last few sales I had were also abstracts, but it looked like, well, there could be an elephant in there somewhere. And people are very attracted to titles, you know, if your title, um, and, and you could title your jewelry, too. Jewelry can, can have titles. Um, sometimes I think people buy the title or the frame, and then they take your piece out and, and use the frame. Yeah, the, ti the, title, the title is really critical. Um, yeah. I know, for example, um, uh, the artist Menlo, uh, his ability to title his pieces really resulted in a lot more sales um, because yeah. it's it kind of helps people solve the mystery or become engaged you know in in the work like the the painting behind us you know um, you, you see the image but then with the title it, it becomes even more powerful for people mm hmm Excellent. That's fantastic. Good. And, and you know, a lot of your pieces, they totally remind me of the New Yorker. Um, and this one I saw today was, uh, it really reminded me of uh, Adam's, you know, I can't remember his first name, but the way it kind of, they're in, the, they're in like a, a corridor. Huh? No, not Ansel Adams. He's a he's a cartoonist. He's the D. Adams family, you know, and, and yeah, just the way the kind of black it is compared to how much white. It just somehow it just took me right to that. Uh, EJ has this huge book on those cartoons, so I've seen quite a few of them, and and it really looks like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you. I really enjoy seeing your. Your work—it's—it's it's so encouraging. I mean, holy cow! And you do all those exercises, which is fantastic, because it go—it happens so fast that he says what to do. You know, it is like, <laughs> and so you—you you put up the video and you also do a sample of it, and that is just great. It really is. We all appreciate that very much. So don't stop doing that. <laughs> You're working hard at your. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. Um, so anyway, that was my first experience with my own art sale that came off eBay. And then, you know, I just sold tons and hundreds, hundreds of paintings. I don't know how many hundreds. And um, I'll just sell them in big batches, you know. <laughs> Because I was painting all, you know, painting a lot in those days, and I didn't want to have them, really, around me. Uh-huh, on eBay, all on eBay, yeah. And sometimes we had fairs, you know, and we'd bring out some 5 by 7s all of us, and, you know, sell them very inexpensively on the street, and... And we sold them, and we also sold them in EJ's, you know, in EJ Gold Gallery. We had, um just like five by sevens people could go through the bins you know and get inexpensive paintings yeah I, I'll have to figure out how that works the apps I don't know I went to your yeah the, oh I didn't press the tab <laughs> I went to the pages oh, but I, I guess I didn't go, I didn't do that part <laughs> so you have to put a science in clear <laughs> Clicking on a shop tab. <laughs> See? 
and I wanted to see stuff, so that was that was what happened to me. I ran away before I clicked on that one. But yeah, so Facebook is also um another place and I did notice at the fair that the artists there are on Etsy. And Etsy is a totally different feel. For me it's like an, an online craft fair whereas eBay is more like it could be an online gallery, it could be, you know, an online shop. It has a totally different feel. And the traffic on eBay I'm sure outweighs Etsy by a million or a billion. But then there's like a million and a billion sellers. So um, I think uh, Viraja said she sold two prints, two of Doug's prints. Oh, man, Rocky, that's who you should be talking to, in fact. She can do like six-foot prints. I mean, she has this equipment that's just incredible and she did one of EJ's and you cannot tell the original and and then she she um, wraps it uh, it's on canvas anyway but I just don't believe it so fantastic and and they're moving here like next week or something <laughs> living here living in Nevada City and they're, and they're opening a shop Opening a shop or something? If they're opening a shop, well, I don't know what they're going to do. You know, because now this house, they just found it yesterday. The downstairs apparently is, you know, they both have room to have studios. So they could even do something there. You know, if you have something where you, what do they call it? It's a, uh, a destination place where people will get in the car and go there because that's where you are, you know, but um, for those of us who don't have that, you got to go where they are, the people, and the fact is, CJ keeps saying this, it's like, there's nobody out there. Here, because it was, I tell you, it took us over half an hour to find a parking spot at this fair. But the whole town was involved in this same thing. They had the fair, they had an art walk, and I think a third thing was, oh, like a music, right? Like a band or something was playing in the night. So everybody was there. Everybody in the whole town <laughs> or, or towns around us, too. They were all there. But that's how much uh, people had to pull together to get a crowd and then they you know share the crowd share the crowd with all these different events going on I don't know that that's been done before usually it's one group you know doing something so new new tactics <laughs> to get the people to come And it was interesting. Dan said, "Well, it died down after you left." It was, it was exactly what EJ predicted. He thought, you know, this is it, and he even stayed. I mean, at the, this god, ungodly hour for him, he left there. Was it around 7:30 at night? <laughs> it's very unusual. That fair sounds like it could um, it could do well, and and I just want to say again that um, the sales, you know, they'll they'll happen. You don't have to really really push it, but there are a few things that I did like to I I did like to try out. And one was, can and, and I probably heard this from somebody, I don't know, uh, can that person, okay, so say it's a painting, I'll just say, well, ah, oh, so you like this one, yeah, it's great, that color blue, blah, 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 it's just, magic your eyes, I'm just saying, but where would you put it? 
And so now they may be involved and say, well, it's actually mine, and I'm actually going to hang it up somewhere, you know, and it it just can just change the space, you know, it takes them into a kind of reality where, yeah, they're living with this this painting that they already really like, and they would really like to have it, but then people, and me, me too, are so full of, oh, well, no, no, objection, 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 and, you know, EJ always says that our job is to help them through these imaginary objections, because for us, if it's really a price, we can always adjust it, because we know how much the thing costs us, and we know, you know, and we want to help the person have that, if it's helping them wake up a little bit, or, you know, have a better life, we want them to have it, but we can't just give it away either. So that's what the object solving the objections are, are all about. <laughs> he, just, he goes to the, the final object the final solution is all right, tell me what I have to tell you to get you to have this thing. <laughs> of course he could say that, but I don't know if I could. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, Mark, I mean, you got you got to host one of these events. My gosh. He's a real he's really good at um this kind of work. And and definitely what's your name, Miss Artiana? What is it? What is it? Anyway, Nadia, I can't remember. I call her Artie. See, she even has the word art in her, in her name. She worked at the gallery, and she is amazing, totally amazing. And of course, antimatter has had a lot of, a lot of sales experience, ages and ages. <laughs> And why are we, what is so important about the marketing? Why do we have to be marketeers? Don't you wonder, EJ has never let up on this job. Does anybody know? Have any idea? Well, I think it's the challenge and what it does for us inside. I mean, I know that I always appreciate going out there and trying. I always feel that you know it's very beneficial something something's being um worked you know inside myself mm -hmm. i've heard i've heard that he ej has said that um it puts us rather than at the end of the chain of everything it puts us higher up on the whatever it is that the mm -hmm. distribution of things so that we're not just the final recipient but we're along the 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 line of what's giving the things out. Mm -hmm. And now with the actual creating of it, I really wish I could remember exactly what he said, but the other day he said something like, well, what would the reason for a universe be? Why would there be a universe? And he said, so that there's a place to create a beautiful thing. And I thought, oh, that is so cool. <laughs> And now we're like not just getting stuff from the institute and marketing it, but actually marketing our own creations. It's very nice. Yeah. So. So is is that it? Was this going to be for an hour? <laughs> Are we done or? I don't know. Yeah, okay. Good. Yes, that's <laughs> Muscle Spark. He's always wanted that to be. So he's, yeah, he's always wanted us to work for ourselves, basically, and not have to um, be dependent on uh, an employer who at any moment can pull a rug right out from under you. That's one thing.
well, before we go, will you walk us through um, just one time that you remember, you know, going into a gallery, either selling EJ's artwork or your own, and just basically um, what you said, how you presented it? Hmm. Well, um, I never did take my own art out there. Well, I did in, in Marin. I used to bring my sculpture and, and after a while, when I started painting, then I brought some paintings. Um, but galleries, I only ever showed EJ's art. And as I say, well, you know, usually when you walk in a gallery, they don't know why you're there. I mean, some sometimes if they're really observant, they can. So first of all, you know, you're a potential customer. And I'm not really sure. Sh- I, I think I like to get that over with as soon as possible, you know. They have to talk to me a certain way. Um, so I would just say uh, why I'm there. I cannot, I mean, I can't remember exactly the words, but I would say that I'm representing, you know, E.J. Gold, is a um, California artist and he and then I would talk about the different things he had done where they might uh, be able to make some connection and then from that point they would know what I was doing there and they would I mean I only went into very high you know pretty known galleries just because I didn't know not to, I thought, well, oh, okay, I've heard of this person, let's go here, Pace Gallery, or, I mean, I don't even remember all their names now, but um, there were, this guy, I can't remember, you know, he's the guy who takes, maybe you'll remember, time or 90% of of the artist's money, Um, I talked to him, and, uh, he was in, he seemed interested, but I just thought, oh my God, that's just too expensive. And and when we did the Cedar Bar show, I had a couple of places that wanted to do that show, and then EJ decided to do it in the bar, the actual bar itself. So even though I mean I don't have a wrap, I didn't have a wrap. I just um, take that step and start talking and whatever you, what I felt was, well, whatever comes out, comes out. Because I just didn't know, you know. I didn't even know enough to know if I, what I was saying was right or wrong. Because I, as I, I say, I didn't know anything about art, and I didn't know, certainly didn't know anything about selling anything. One of the things that, uh, you know, Art Lantia is saying is, is really true and uh, in my experience when I was in New York um, you know it's it's good to specialize um, in you know EJ since he's kind of the master artist but I've in my experience I found if you were trying to put yourself out as an art rep you wanted to have more than one artist and so like EJ mentioned there's the Grass Valley Graphics Group Um, and, you know, there's some very competent, you know, like Douglas Truth. So, so sometimes it seemed more believable if you were repping a couple artists than just one, but that, that was just my experience in New York. Yeah, I always felt, like, kind of unbelieved. Like, how could me, a schmuck, be representing, like, this great artist? You know, what are they going to think? <laughs> you know, I just did it anyway. Because they could talk to me and ask me questions, and I wouldn't know anything. But for some reason, you know, that was look. It it didn't actually matter because you were there and you were with them, you know, and you were nice and 
you know, they may be having a hard day otherwise, except for they get to spend a little time, maybe even laugh a little. <laughs> so it has nothing to do with the art, <laughs> after all. They <laughs> just, they feel better, so. Uh, yeah. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, true, you don't really have to worry about exactly what to say. You just go in there and say, Here I am. You've been waiting for me, and now here I am. <laughs> and then you have yes. Marianne, who, yeah, she could, she'll be your model at your fair and wear your jewelry. Looking so beautiful. Yes, she has been. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Who's putting those little things together, those advertisements? You guys, this is fantastic. <laughs> it really makes you want to come to the event. <laughs> They're really fun. Mems, memes. Yes, uh, great. I love your hair, by the way. <laughs> Can never get the hairdresser out of you once it gets in there. <laughs> oh, hi, Ian. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you. And now don't forget to get uh, Artlantia. Artlantia, there we go. She's Atlantis and they are go at the same time. Get her on your list. And who else? There's Mark R. Grocky. Yes, well. Have you already done it, Antimatter? I'm sorry, what did you say? Have you, have you already done this? Have you hosted? 